another one of our GSCM STEM videos. I'm really glad that you guys are joining us again today, and we have another very special guest, Chef Matthew Milani from The Rumor Mill in Ellicott City. Now, we've invited Chef Matthew here today to show us a little bit about cooking, but a very particular area of cooking. So, Chef Milani actually incorporate, incorporates molecular gastronomy into his cooking techniques. Correct. So, can you tell me a little bit about what that means? Um, molecular gastronomy, for all intents and purposes, is the science of cooking, or the science of breaking down food into the cooking techniques that we use. So it's really precise, really correct, really scientific of how we come about making dishes happen. So with the sweet, sour, salty, bitter, how we actually break those down scientifically. Awesome. Okay, great. And can you tell me a little bit about what you do? Um, well, I own a restaurant and I'm the executive chef. Our restaurant's almost eight years old and we do a lot of, uh, we call it global fusion small plates. So we take uh, dishes from all, the whole entire globe and we make them into two or three bite-sized portions and we can hopefully have the guests enjoy multiple of them and have a culinary uh, adventure throughout their meal. Great. Okay, awesome. Um, now, did you always know you wanted to go into cooking or opening a restaurant? Yes. Um, I used to cook a lot. Uh, I think the term back in the day was latchkey kid and you'd come home and you would uh, pull out the chicken for the refrigerator for mom and then you know, a month later you'd pull out the chicken and then preheat the oven. <laughs> And then pull the chicken, preheat the oven, and season it, and put it in. And then, you know, instant mashed potatoes or stove top started. <laughs> so, throughout my time, you know, we, we got to cook, and, you know, you know, having the responsibility of the oven and the knives was uh, a way for my parents to trust me and a way to help out with the family. So, cooking just kind of happened for me. And then, uh, you know, food just became a thing with the family, and you, it's where you interact, and, you know, where your conversation is, and you talk about your day, and it's, you know, it's a great time. So yes, I always knew, and always got pushed into the culinary world, and uh, to cook and to clean up and different things. It was fun. Awesome. And can you tell us a little bit about your background? So I know you had an early love for cooking, but how did how did you get here to this point? Um, I started cooking, you know, at a young age, and a little background from the Boy Scouts of America, and just kind of learned some things, and you know, uh, different family members took different turn, different times cooking throughout uh, when we were growing up and everything. So I always enjoyed that and then I uh, got the opportunity to work for uh, my uncle's restaurant, uh, kind of as a bus boy or bar back, and I really loved it. You know, and then you know, the hours are unique and uh, it's hard <laughs> work, but uh, it's just one of those things, there's just camaraderie there, there's, um, you know, you get to meet people with their, their highest highs and their lowest lows and hopefully they all leave, you know, happy at the end of the night. <laughs> And uh, from there, I, I got to work in a, at a restaurant in Ocean City, got to see a resort. And uh, from there, I came back and, and worked for one of the best chefs in Baltimore City. And her kind of passion and drive made me go to culinary school. And from culinary school, I got to work with some unbelievable people. I got to work at the White House for a while, uh, Clinton's second term. I got to work under Chef Paul Perdome in Texas. Um, and it's just kind of snowballed into really what I loved and right time, the right place. Um, for people about my age, the culinary world, you know, the Food Network really blossomed when I was coming out of culinary school and, you know, the chef title and the chef coat meant a lot when people see you out. Um, and that just continued and continued and food, you know, everybody has a food memory. So it's just, it's one of those things I really just gravitated toward and right time, right place. And, you know, it, it became really easy for me. And I think once you find something you love, that's kind of how it happens. Great. Um, so what's the best part about your job? If you can pick me one or two things. Well, I'm never hungry. I don't, that's <laughs> really um, but at the same time, I'm also asked every time we go out, you know, to, to cook or to get this stuff, <laughs> which I kind of like because then it's, I can control it a little bit. I make sure everything tastes right. right. Um, I think the best part of my job is, you know, is my staff has to be up there. This is uh, you know, people that I, I might not have normally met and now they're basically part of our family. Um, the guest relationship that we met from people that come in, you know, daily and monthly and weekly to people that come in only once, but it's this relationship that you get to build and um, you get to tell a story with your food and hopefully people get in and park into memories for people. So it's just something that we really love. But the people that we meet and the food that we get to touch, I think, are the, the best part. Absolutely. Very cool. Um, is there something surprising? about your job? I mean, you didn't know going into it, but now that you've been into it for a couple of years? 
I think I, I think the amount of paperwork that we do really? um, is okay. always something interesting. Um, I don't think I can't, you know, every time I go to the food store or go to the farmer's market, I, I always get stopped and people ask you a question. <laughs> so I think you're, you have to be an expert on food or, you know, you have to have, you know, somebody constantly comes up to you and says, what would you do with this and they hand you something? <laughs> That, that's a, a definitely interesting part of my day. Um, I, I think just the, the amount of work, um, in a good sense though, but mm -hmm. you know, it's very easy to come into our kitchen and cook because there's, you know, tomatoes and onions are diced and the steaks are all cooked and the seafood's there and fresh and you know, we have the gas ovens and the pans and it's very easy to put a dish together. But it took us a while to cut all the tomatoes and to cut all the onions and cut down the steaks and. I think that the whole prep of it, getting the day ready, is, is a hard part. Okay. But it's fun at the same time, too. Yeah, definitely. All right, um, you probably get asked this a lot. What is your favorite dish to either make or to eat? Either oh. one or both. I think that's evolved a long time. Okay. I, mean, I think there's uh, some staples that you have to go back to. My grandfather was a butcher, so you know steaks are big um, for us, for cutting down meat, pork, lamb. Um, there's always comfort food, something that, you know, it's, uh, and onions and peppers and Italian sausage and tomato sauce that kind of, you know, permeates through the house. That's a, that's a good food memory for us. Um, things new, things that, you know, you, you go uh, to somebody's house and they want to cook with you and finding, going through their spices and going through their ingredients and making a dish from what they have is, is definitely one of my tops uh, on things that we like to cook. Um, but I think it's always evolving. There's always something new. There's a new trend coming out, or there's right. a new technique that's coming out. So it's trying to stay at, uh, on top of everything. Okay, great. And then I know you mentioned before that you worked for um, a female chef in Baltimore. Is that yes, correct? Yes, Chef Cindy Wolf. Okay. So are there a lot of females in your profession? In right now, there's there's 52 percent female in the okay. hospitality industry. Okay. Now that covers a little bit more of hostesses and bus girls and desk room clerks and you know support staff there's a lot of males that do the same jobs um, the culinary side we're seeing more and more women and not just in the pastry side but running their own kitchens um, there's always James Beard award women female chefs and uh, I think the movement is too smaller food uh, we would say on this feminine side Food where everything's kind of plated and tight and nice, rather than you know these huge masculine food with <laughs> steaks, you know the size <laughs> to play. Um, so I think there's definitely a movement there. You know, you, you see a lot of women. We we hire uh, female cooks all the time. And we have great hostess staff. We have female bartenders, female managers. Um, my wife even as a co-owner, she's our general manager. She's our bar manager as well. Um, I think it's a, a definitely an equal opportunity place. There's there's women coming in more and more every day that are better and better than their male counterparts. So it's, it's definitely interesting. Part. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not scared yet, but you know, there are some great ones out there. Awesome. Very cool. And my last question is, do you have any advice um, for girls who are interested in culinary arts or if they're interested in STEM careers or you know, looking into chemistry, things like that? Any advice for them? I think everything kind of can go back to science. Science and math. Some of the people really like those subjects, some people don't. But once you find something you love, it doesn't become as science as math. It becomes a part of your job. Um, we tell people all the time that the trade schools are more um, focused on this one career. So in culinary, our maths were cost controls and writing schedules so that people didn't have too many hours. Our sciences were, you know, weighing proteins out, weighing things like baking and pastry. Our Englishes were resume writing and cover writing and you know, how to write schedules, how to write employee handbooks. So it didn't ever really thought like English, science, math. It actually just thought of what I would do every day. Right. Um, so I, I really pushed the trade school. For culinary in particular, just try and cook. Anything and everything. There's nothing terrible. Learn your sweet, sour, salty, and bitter and what you can replace those things with. That's, that's our, our biggest idea. Great. Well, thank you so much again. I really appreciate you being here. Um, we look forward to seeing some great demos from you. Awesome. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you.